how's it? Did a little road trip this weekend. We're gonna go for a adventure paddle. Heading into the North Cascades of Washington State. This is a really beautiful area. And in particular, we're gonna go paddle on Lake Chelan, which is about 55 miles in length. And this is a really cool spot. It starts kind of in the high desert. It's got a lot of vineyards, very beautiful. And then it moves into uh, the Cascade Mountains. It gets really wild. So I thought I'd make a video about it, take you guys along for the adventure. This is the time of year when I do this kind of stuff because all the races are kind of done for me and it's just really fun to, uh, to get out there and do some stuff that is less racing centric and more just adventure. All right, we are done at the boat launch and I figured I'd take a quick second to walk you guys through this particular ski. I've, this is an epic V12 that has been converted for touring. Done little touches, um, little stuff like this, little compass. And then we have the modern baler. This is a first gen Epic V12. And uh, this is the boat that once flew off of my car and got rebuilt with bulkheads and hatches and um, some carbon reinforcements to make it kind of able to carry the workload. But there's other little nice touches like padding here to set maps or to, uh, to put flip-flops, which is often where I put them. But then we have some cool little touches like this, but this is just an integrated tube that um, takes care of the hydro and you can run it along. Really fun boat, weighs about 33 pounds naked. And then today we're gonna have another 40 pounds of kit for two, three days up lake. Okay, so this is, uh, this is pretty cool. Hold up. Get my stuff ready, and uh, this guy right here, this, his name is Jim. And hey, Jim, <laughs> he comes up to me and he says, Hey, that's a cool surf ski, I want to see that. And then he uh, tells me about his surf ski, which he got for I think 60 or 80 bucks, which is pretty amazing. I have no idea what vintage this bad boy is, but look at how shallow that seat is. This is old school, literally old cool that <laughs> way ahead of its time it's actually a good idea and then how about this you watching Greg Barton you see this idea this is pretty hot you have to admit you have to admit and then he's kind of rigged up a looks like a epic elliptical rudder and he squared off the, the top of it to get it to work with his yoke and this thing is ghastly heavy I have a feeling it's a foam ski. I have to say this is the first time I've met another surf ski paddler on the lake. Pretty cool moment. <laughs> A little further up lake, you can sort of see the mountains will steepen. It's a pretty, pretty gray, cold day. Um, the cliffs are starting to rise. And this is where you get <clears throat> some really cool campsites. It's in these cliffs. The lake right here is 1,500 feet, which I think is pretty deep. At its deepest point, I believe, it's uh, about 150 to 200 feet below sea level. So this lake is stinking deep, and that means that the boats really don't have access to the cliffs because they'll get beat up in the wind and um, there's no way to anchor. So for paddlers, this is just a dream of all these incredible spots that no one else can get to. Um, it has flattened out. It was quite a bit windier. Now it's just really calm and nice and Kind of cool. <laughs> nice day for a paddle. All right, so just arrived at what is Camp One. And this is a really cool spot. I've camped here so many times through the years. It's little markers, how you find it. It's just a Supremely awesome spot. It's gonna be a little awkward getting in because the water is higher than I'm used to And these rocks are just slippery But you can see that there's grass right there. So if I can get my ski right in between that little notch 
no big deal. Okay, so here's the ski, just kind of like tucks in. Uh, one of the deals with this lake is there are other campsites, docks and really cool, nice little facilities. But that's not really why I come up lake. I come up lake to be by myself and <clears throat> be in the wilderness and that's exactly what this is. So when you're paddling up here, you just kind of, through the years, you start to observe that there's little cool features like this where when it's blowing real hard, it's just a ramp. You can walk right down on it, especially if you're killing, carrying a heavy, delicate ski. Uh, nice little feature. And then being able to uh, tuck, your, tuck your boat in out of the, the wind. In the tree here. You can see the, just sitting on the grass, and then later on, I'm gonna anchor it to this nice tree that's real strong. And um, <clears throat> it's up out of the waterline, which is nice as well. The scenery does not disappoint. This is what makes the land so special. Uh, it's kind of hard to tell today because a lot of overcast. So when you look at the water, it looks gray, but kind of flat. But on a super bright day, it's just unbelievable because the water's so clean, so cool. And uh, it's also fresh water, so it really simplifies long distance touring in water, and yet this lake, it behaves sometimes like a sea or an ocean and can get really wild and rough. So if I was a kid, this is the kind of place I would build a fort. It's really awesome, beautiful granite boulders here, and you just kind of thread your way up and you can see there's a nice little tent site right here I've slept there a few times I'm not sure I'm gonna set my tent up there this time given that we have some real wind coming tonight tomorrow uh, and then here's a little fire ring which has not been used in a long time and uh, this is where I'm gonna pitch my tent right here and there's a nice little subtle little rock little shelter that um, can be scrabbled together real fast when I visit this site. And over here is a cool little spot that we like to, sometimes when I visit with friends or family, this is also a really cool little kind of a diving board. Maybe I'll jump off this later on, later on today. Really cool spot though. Just gotta make sure you clear that first band of rocks to get all the way down. It's probably 35 feet, be my guess. 30 feet. Not too bad, but you don't wanna muff it. <laughs> and then this is just this really cool canyon back in here. And um, such a neat spot. I've seen bears up there, all kinds of wildlife. It's morning time. <laughs> I chuckle because the wind never stopped last night. It just pumped straight through the night. My little one person tent right there did good. It was fine. But uh, today I think what I'm going to do is break camp and head farther up lake faster. And uh, I'm just going to go just go about a new, a new spot to camp for the night. I've camped here through the years numerous times. And as much as I love this spot, I think I want to go find something new. So we're going to break up camp, chow some food, get in the boat, see what's up. This part's gonna be a little hard. One of my 
my favorite things about this lake <clears throat> is when you uh, go from where I am to uh, around the point and the view changes so dramatically. So this is one of my favorite spots. It kind of like the lake shifts from a northwest to more of a true west direction. It's a pretty cool little point. In bad weather, this is a horrible place to be <laughs> because you can get really conflicting swirling winds that rush down from these big peaks and uh, rescue is just a no-go. There's no one who's gonna come get you. So we're about to cross this little peak. campground just before Stahican. It's up lake. Really awesome spot. Um, it's gotten really windy so I'm probably gonna do a downwind somewhere back down the lake and stay in another wilderness spot. I don't want to stay in a big campground but you can see behind me this is pretty developed. There's fire pits and a table. I'm chowing on some lunch over there. there. <laughs> so um, yeah it's getting windy. It's getting real windy starting to build and it's supposed to build all through the afternoon so probably two foot wind waves out there right now and maybe a couple of three footers so it's actually um could be a heck of a downwind i'm not sure but my gopro may have run its course i'm gonna take a look at it here but this one may be for the imagination <laughs> we'll see Set up camp. It's a really good spot. Sort of the nice little reward for the rough landing debacle on the other side of this big rock. Here's my little tent. This is just kind of a super cool rocky little cleft. Pretty sure that today was a long day. Um, paddled from my camp this morning about 25 miles up to Stahican. And then uh, maybe not quite 25 miles, about 20, yeah, about 25 miles, and then another 22 miles or so back. So just under 50 miles on the clock today, which is a lot. Uh, you can see the wind is going pretty good, but not really good enough to for you know super easy surfs. So you end up chasing them. 
and uh, just a lot of work and a little reward. So I just got too tired at the end of the day to keep paddling even though I had good wind. I was like, okay, I gotta get off. I gotta get off the water and uh, relax a little bit. So here I am, this is the prize. Awesome day out. Check this out. This camping spot has a built-in paddle rack. You like that? That's pretty good, right? Yeah. Thumbs up. Not blowing away. Okay, I'm gonna point out one piece of gear. If you're a paddler and you kayak, it's a mega pain in the ass to take a folding chair. However, this is tiny and it fits into the hole really nicely. When I pack everything, I look for cylinders. My tent is a cylinder, my clothing gets packed into cylinders, I try to make my sleeping bag a cylinder, everything is a cylinder. So the beauty of this chair is that you can be completely hunkered down in your tent and it's like you'll have back support, which after a really big day of paddling is so awesome. So way to go Crazy Creek. This chair has been with me on countless paddling trips because it folds up to very little. Okay, good morning. It's time to go. Had a great night's sleep. There was virtually no wind. You can see it's kind of a nice sunny morning over there. It's pretty awesome actually. Uh, good, I'll take it. No critters, no wildlife, not on any of these nights. So now it's time to pack up our stuff and probably head out of here. It's about 7.45 in the morning. Hope to be on the water by about 8.30 after we break camp. There is a little bit of wind, and that should give us a nice little tail on home. It could complicate getting out of here. So, great poison.
Thank you.